Thank you, Al. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Berliner, for being here today. Um, as you've stated, the bond between our nations has always been very strong, and I think that we are today just seeing that uh, is going to be strengthened in the future with your words, whereby you noted a whole number, a host of ways in which we work together, from the work on Sky ECC and the police, to the administration's work on diplomacy, um, to the vaccines, which are produced from Pfizer here in Belgium, in Pius. Indeed, I think that the alliance between our nations is strong and should be continued. I do have a couple of specific uh, questions um, that you haven't uh, addressed, and I would like to ask you your opinion on these. You've mentioned China and you've mentioned the 5G. Um, indeed, I think that's important to note that Belgium has taken the uh, decision to work with uh, European manufacturers. Um, when it comes to China, human rights of the Uyghurs is another important aspect that unites us. Um, when it comes to the pandemic and the pandemic response, I would like to know the World Health Organization's um, investigation into China. Does that, is that enough for the United States, the way the investigation was handled up until now? or do you seek clarification? Because there, was, there were a number of questions asked internationally about did China do enough at the beginning? Did it warn the world enough? Was it covering up things? And what is the origin of the virus? I mean, some people still say, maintain, it might have escaped from uh, the Wuhan lab. The previous administration was a little bit more uh, direct in that the current administration is a little more hesitant. I would like to know uh, where you actually stand and if you would like this issue to be further uh, looked into. When it comes to Russia, indeed, uh, Sergei Navalny, I think his um, safety, his, his health is of importance to all of us. Um, you didn't talk about hacking. And some of the recent sanctions that you have placed on Russia, if I'm not mistaken, they were specifically because of the hacking and the solar winds um, hack that has wreaked havoc in a lot of organizations. Have you seen any change from Russia over the last current period when it comes to offensive hacking techniques? Do you believe that Europe and Belgium is doing enough? Are we aware enough of the threat emanating from that side or should we do more? Then the, I mean, the, the reason that we've invited you here is also because we have a resolution um, that is pending in this commission about furthering the, uh, the alliance. And it does ask a number of questions of the United States. For example, one of the requests um, is about the International Criminal Court. And while I, um, if I can cite um, on the State Department's website, uh, it says, we continue to disagree strongly with the ICC's action relating to the Afghanistan and Palestinian situation. We do maintain our longstanding objection to the court's efforts to assert jurisdiction over personnel of non-state parties such as the United States and Israel. I would like to know if there is any further action that you are going to undertake specifically on that point and how you feel that the current resolution that is asking the United States to uh, to join the court, if that is something that um, you think should be a decision by the United States um, or, you know, a, a, a gentle push from Europe will change that. And um, what we didn't see in the resolution, and therefore I would like to hear it from you, the resolution does obviously ask for closer cooperation, better ties, trade. Where do you see that Belgium and Europe in particular needs to step up, needs to do a little bit more because we're here on the friends, so I don't think it's a problem to say, this is what we're doing good, and these are the good points, but there are a number of points where we would like you to do a little bit more. For example, when it comes to the budget of, uh, of NATO spending uh, and others. So if I may ask you to um, speak freely in this commission and tell us where you think that we can do a little bit more, I would be glad to hear that from you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for those, uh, thank you for those questions. 
Um, let, me start, um, let me start with Mr. Mr. Froelich. Um, you mentioned the pandemic uh, and the uh, WHO uh, investigation. Um, let me just make a couple of comments there. I mean, first of all, uh, when President Biden took office, he recommitted uh, the U.S. Uh, to membership in the WHO. So I think that's important. Um, we feel that the WHO is the mechanism uh, through which to work uh, internationally, multilaterally, um, to address challenges such as the, such as the pandemic. Um, with regard to your question about the origins uh, of the uh, pandemic and the uh, report that was issued uh, by the WHO, um, we do have concerns uh, about uh, deficiencies uh, in that report, um, and these are things I think that we would like to see that we would like to see addressed and addressed uh, within the context uh, of the of the WHO. Um, with regard to Russia um, and Navalny and hacking, uh, the uh, sanctions that the U.S. put in place uh, recently that the president uh, announced were uh, as a result of several uh, actions uh, on the part of uh, the government of the Russian Federation. Um, one of those was the ongoing uh, uh, meddling and interference uh, in U.S. Uh, domestic elections, um, uh, which is, of course, not a new theme. Uh, but something that has, has repeated. Uh, another of those was uh, in response to the allegations uh, that I think everybody is aware of, uh, that the uh, Russian government was uh, offering bounties uh, and rewards uh, for the killing of American and other uh, NATO soldiers uh, serving in Afghanistan. And then the last was uh, over the hacking uh, and the solar winds. Um, I think it's uh, safe to say that this is not the only incident uh, of, uh, uh, of this nature, and this is something that we feel is very important that we work on together, uh, U.S. and Belgium, U.S. and Europe, um, to address these cyber vulnerabilities. Uh, this, is a, this is an important and growing concern, uh, and it's really one that we're, all, uh, that we're all exposed to, and we all need to tackle it together. Uh, with regard to the ICC, uh, of course, you, as has been stated here, um, the, uh, we, we, our pre under a previous administration, we had imposed uh, sanctions on the, on the chief prosecutor at the ICC. Uh, the Biden administration has, has removed those. Now, this is not um, because we necessarily agree with uh, all aspects of the ICC or that we agree with everything that the ICC is doing, um, but we uh, think that there are better ways to address uh, these concerns. But we do have concerns and have since the very beginning about the politicization uh, of the ICC as, as an instrument, um, and, these, uh, and these remain uh, very, very current uh, in, the, in the United States and I think are shared um, among, among a broad uh, representation of our political body uh, in the U.S. Uh, on that. And then in terms of uh, closer uh, cooperation, I mean, it's, um, there's a lot, of course, on our, on our agenda. I think our, our first challenge is right now, we are, we've been talking about a lot. These are, of course, getting the pandemic under control. This is the first thing uh, for any of us without getting past the pandemic, it's gonna be very hard to move on to other issues. Uh, we're expecting to work very closely on climate issues. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the U.S. is also committed to carbon neutrality by 2050 and also to uh, at least a 50% reduction in our CO2 emissions by 2030. So I think these targets very much align with the targets now that are in place in Europe, and it's going to be very, very important for us to work together to really be uh, leaders as we account for a, for a major part of world uh, GDP. And together we have a lot of weight to, to move those issues to move those issues forward. Um, of course, we do still have outstanding uh, uh, disagreements on various aspects of trade. Um, we know about the longstanding dispute uh, on uh, large uh, civil aircraft, a a aka uh, Airbus and Boeing, uh, 
Uh, we've taken a four-month pause on that to allow our trade negotiators to, to, to try to make uh, progress and to try to find a resolution to that. Um, we've also, of course, for many, many years had uh, ongoing discussions about various aspects of trade related to agriculture, for example, um, and there are others um, where I think that we uh, haven't always had uh, a complete 100% of alignment of views across the Atlantic, but our hope is that we can um, that we can make good progress on these and uh, and that we will be able to 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 move forward. But the fundamental message from from the Biden administration is that we're committed to partnership, we're committed to our alliances, and we're committed to working multilaterally uh, to solve the issues. There's no there are no issues now that that one one country can address alone. <laughs>